I would bet my entire family's life that if the black president, Barack Obama- That's not arbitrary, bro. Why are you so dishonest? This dude is so hawkish. Holy f what does he want? Should we be de like deploying, uh, deploying our military to like Ukraine right now and just, or should we start bombing Russia immediately? Or like, what I, What does Benny Boy think we should be doing here? Is that Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson back and forth? Is that real or is that a meme? That people fall off their roof installing solar panels? You fall off the roofs when you're installing it. Oh. Yeah. That's oh, gravity. Right. Yeah, gravity. Gravity. Yeah. And you know, that's a good example of unintended consequences. Because... <laughs> Let's watch our uh, Benny boy. Joe Biden is one year into his presidency and it is a full-fledged disaster on every single level. Can he pull out of the tailspin? I'm Ben Shapiro, this is The Ben Shapiro Show. One year ago, the President of the United States was inaugurated. He was handed a working vaccine. He was handed a distribution plan for that. He was handed peace in the Middle East. He was handed a fairly stable situation. Can we stop with this cringe talking point? that Trump gave us peace in the Middle East because they negotiated like two things with countries that weren't even like majorly involved in conflict. This is so cringe. It is absolutely so fucking cringe that Republicans try to peddle that talking point. In Afghanistan, he was handed a Russia and, and Chinese move that had been largely blocked. Russia and China were at least somewhat stagnant. And all of this was really easy. Like if you go back and you listen to my predictions for Joe Biden, here's what I said when he was inaugurated. I said, and for the first two years, we'd have a pretty easy time of it because the economy was going, in, going to go into a natural recovery. We had had an artificial coma for the economy. We were already coming out of it by Q4 of 2020. And certainly 2021 was going to be a massive boom year followed by 2022, which would also be a massive boom year. And almost nothing Joe Biden could do could stop that. Well, wrong I was. It turns out that Joe Biden could, in fact, stop that. Joe Biden was handed peace in the Middle East. And I said, I'm not sure how he can really screw that up because it's not like the Iranians are on the verge of signing a deal with the United States. How can you screw that up? Well, he has somehow managed to screw that up as well. I said, you know, Joe Biden, even Joe Biden isn't- I wonder if when he was talking about year one of Trump, now I know that Ben Shapiro wasn't the biggest Trump fan, so maybe he would have been critical of Trump, but like, Notice how in year one of Trump, even though Trump more or less continued all the recovery that was undergoing, um, that the economy was undergoing prior to that with Obama, but everybody wants to give Trump credit for all of that. I wonder if he would say the same for that as well. Like, well, all this recovery, you know, under Trump, like, okay, yeah, it just continued from Obama, didn't it, right? And now, but now it's like, but now that a Democrat is coming, it's like, well, all this recovery is already happening under Trump. Well, Biden didn't do anything. It's like, okay, I don't know. Stupid enough to be weak with China and, and Russia. I mean, at least Joe Biden is going to be somewhat tough. Yeah, no. so here is the thing. Joe Biden has had the worst first year of any president in American history. Okay, don't you think it's a little bit hyperbolic? Now, my history is not great, but I'm pretty sure that if I were to go back through history, there've probably been some presidents that have done worse in year one. No, some, some, from Washington to now, I'm sure there must've been at least one. <clears throat> any president in American history. There are only two exceptions. William Henry Harrison, because he was dead after 40 days, because he went out in the rain and then got pneumonia and died. And right. James Garfield, who was shot to death. Those are the only two dudes who had a worse time of it than Joe Biden in his first year. There are other presidents who have had bad first years. Don't get me wrong. Herbert Hoover was hit with the Great Depression in 1929. And then his response was, was bad. But that was an extraneous circumstance that impacted his presidency. That was something unexpected. Right, that was a circumstance that sort of fell on him. Same thing with Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln's first year, half the country seceded. That really wasn't because of Abraham Lincoln. That wasn't his fault. He was handed a really bad situation. Year one of the George W. Bush administration gets September 11th. Joe Biden hasn't had any of those things. Joe Biden was handed peace. Uh, uh, <laughs> wait, can we, what, are, what is this framing? Like, yeah, when Joe Biden came in, uh, everything was going just fine. We're like, I'm sorry, but the coronavirus has been worse for the world than fucking 9-11, dog. Are you Remember serious? Remember Trump bombed an airport and killed a few Afghani civilians to get that Iranian general. Uh, like, how are we going to sit here and say that that everything was just going dandily, swimmingly? Jesus. Joe Biden was handed a track, a natural track to prosperity. All he had to do was be what he already was, which was a dead person. That's all he had to do. Ironically, if Joe Biden had had William Henry Harrison's first year, he'd still be a popular president. Because Joe Biden was elected to be not alive. He was elected to be a, a, a houseplant, as I say, 
a barely alive thing that doesn't speak very much and blocks the water stains. That's pretty much all he was there to do, President Houseplant. And somehow, he has managed to blow this in historic fashion. It is the greatest self-inflicted wound I have ever seen a president commit. And that includes President Trump. Yeah, President Trump. Something that really sucks about our economic well-being is, and I understand maybe what Ben is doing here, <clears throat> it really does seem like a lot of how we feel about the economy might come down to our um, the news sources that we watch, that they can heavily influence our, our feeling of the uh, state of affairs. Um, uh, this is another article that I read before. Um, this is unfortunately another article I read before I was saving them. But I've read that like when you look at economic anxiety and shit and then you compare the numbers, that depending on who's in office, sometimes people can... Find a little planet rotating on a horizontal axis. Weird. Um, people can feel better or worse about the economy literally just based on who's in office, even if all the economic indicators and everything are the exact same. Um, so that's it's a little scary. So like what Ben is doing here is actually playing an important role in the uh, in like the the propaganda machine, I guess we could say, of conservatives because he um, because even if things are going okay, if you tell people they're not, they might get the feeling that they're not. You might notice more problems otherwise, you know. Realistically, inflation isn't that high and the rate of change is slowing, but the fear of inflation causes more inflation. Um, maybe, I've heard different people argue over how to measure inflation and how high is it, but I think there is inflation in a few key consumer things like gas. Um, and when inflation happens there, no, there is no economic alchemy we can do to hide that. People are gonna notice it. But I have heard people argue with like, should inflation be seven and a half percent? Like, or is the CPI basket of goods like an, uh, like not a good way to measure inflation? Like 70% of the inflation is coming from the cost of, um, it was, uh, I think it was gas and one other thing. So, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's complicated, I'm not sure. I don't know enough about it to know like what's good or what's bad in terms of it. Trump spent several years completely undermining the accomplishments of his own administration because he couldn't stop his fingers from hitting buttons on Twitter. Okay, but here's the thing. Trump was unpopular the day he came into office. Joe Biden was wildly popular when he came into office. And somehow, Joe Biden has managed to make himself an extraordinarily unpopular president. To the point where Quinnipiac polls, yeah, they're slight outliers, but only slight, have him in the low 30s. I mean, look at, let, let's look at the presidential approval ratings for, for example, Donald Trump. Okay, we'll use Trump as the contrast point, because of course, according to the left, Trump was the worst president in America. Okay, so right from the outset, Donald Trump did not have Fucking one day of his presidency where he was in the black in his approval rating. He did not have one net positive day in his presidency where he was on top in the approval rating. Day one, day one, he was almost even. He was like 45% positive, 45% negative. And immediately, within like the first couple of weeks, he had shifted to 49% negative and like 46% positive. And then he just kind of stayed there for his entire presidency. He had some ups, he had some downs. I think that breaking this down by party might be a little bit more illuminating. I don't deny what Ben is saying is true here, but it honest to God feels like Trump could have raped a group of children on stage and his Republican support rating would still be in the like upper 80s. Um, I'm sorry, I don't like to do the... Uh, as you can tell over the past year, I've been trying to be more um, understanding of the other side. Uh, and, and I'm trying to like be a little bit more like, okay, I understand why you feel this way. But no offense, if you're a conservative, like Trump could do no wrong in your eyes. He, he could do anything and you would jump to justify it. Literally anything. He could rape women, children. He could murder children. Um, he could bomb countries. He could kill your parents. Um, you, there will always be a good reason for why Daddy Trump did what he did. And he will always enjoy massively high support in the Republican Party. Uh, I don't know why that is, but that's definitely going to influence the uh, favorability here because I'm pretty sure Trump always enjoyed unbelievably high support in the Republican Party. Uh, Biden doesn't have the same. I don't think the Democrats usually feel the same way about Democrats. Um, for whatever reason you want to get into it, for whatever argument you want to get into it, Democrats seem to be more critical of their own. Um, that's why you'll get Republicans like having to have like huge sex scandals for them to maybe finally be ousted, depending on how hard Republicans think the charges will stick or whatever. Whereas Democrats are willing to throw out a fucking senator like Al Franken because of like a joke photo that was taken in you know the 1800s. So yeah, I don't know. I, like tr Trump. Trump's favorability will never be that low historically, probably. I don't know how low he ended up in terms of all presidents. It was pretty low, I think, like historically low, but not, he I don't think it was the lowest, but that's because he always enjoys wide support from the Republican establishment, no matter what.
or Republican Party, I should say. When it was really bad, you had up to 58% of people disliking him and 39% and of people liking him. Didn't he get massive pushback when he leaned towards gun control after the Vegas shooting? Nope. I think some people gave it a little bit of lip service because I think he banned like bump stocks, but I think people in general just didn't really care or talk about it that much. That was a huge talking point that I used for a while and no conservative even knew about it. I would always say there was more gun control legislation enacted under Trump than Obama, but nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Like Trump can do no wrong to an average Republican. I don't know why they just don't. They, they, they just don't view it that way. But by the end of his first year, he was riding about 54% disapproval and 42% approval. And so he was, he was underwater by 10 points, 12 points by the, end of his, by the end of his first year. And now, here is Joe Biden's approval rating. This is unbelievable. It really is. It's incredible. So he starts off with a 55%, 56% approval rating. Only 36% of Americans say they disapprove of Joe Biden. And pretty quickly, you start to see these lines narrow, right? But, but they're not narrowing to the Destiny, point- Destiny, the same way Obama could do no wrong, I think Obama got a ton of pushback in his administration for a few different things. One was I think Obama got criticized a lot by minority groups for his immigration policy. I think a lot of people were critical of him there. That's where like the deporter in chief nickname came from. I think that people were critical of Obama for quite a while. I don't know how mainstream it was, but I always heard people criticize him. Why didn't you shut down Guantanamo Bay? Why didn't you shut down Guantanamo? I heard that question a lot. Um, uh, he got he lost the House and the Senate right in the in the second in like his lame duck year um, or election season. I think he lost the House after his um, after two years. I think. Um, yeah, he got a lot of shit for the drone strikes strike stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like Obama got a decent amount of pushback um, for, for his presidency from the left and right, but point where he's anywhere near negative territory by the time you hit in the end of july he's he's kind of around 45 percent disapproved but he's still got 51 percent approval rating there's a swing of about three points on average like a, a mild decrease in his approval rating and then comes afghanistan which is when the president of the united states decides to shoot his entire administration directly in the face and when I say shoot his administration in the face, what I really mean is get 13 American service people killed, abandon 19 million women to, to abject sex slavery, and allow a, bunth, a bunch of 8th century barbarian cavemen to overrun a country and take all of America's leftover military equipment. It turns out Americans don't- Only like half of this is true. Like, firstly, the timetable was technically established by Daddy Trump, number one. Um, number two, the, the Taliban are not cavemen. Um, you're doing yourself a disservice in understanding how other groups of people work. Like, they're, it's a sophisticated organization. They raise a lot of money across the world. They are very well organized. They are working in conjunction with other governments, especially the Pakistani government. Um, they're not cavemen. Um, I know that maybe we've watched Rambo movies and we think these guys just like crawl out of holes and shoot you with like fucking World War II guns or some shit, but like these people are like pretty sophisticated. Also, a lot of the, um, a lot of the equipment that we did end up leaving, a lot of it was, I think the helicopters at the very least were sabotaged before we left, but I mean. Don't like that sort of thing. And so Joe Biden's disapproval rating now spikes into the, into the plurality position of the American people. By the time you hit September, which is exactly when this happens, right? The end of August, the, the beginning of September. How do you think conservatives would be reacting to the plot was entirely the same, but Trump was president? They wouldn't say a single fucking thing. I don't know if, I'm trying to remember, I'm being, I'm trying to be charitable. Did conservatives care at all when we basically abandoned the Kurds um, to the Turks and Syrians? Did they give a fuck at all when we just left and they all got destroyed and fucked? I don't know if I've ever heard a conservative say anything about abandoning our Kurdish allies. I feel like nobody gave a fuck, but. This giant spike in the disapproval rating over the course of late August. By the time you hit the beginning of September, Joe Biden is now at 48% disapprove and 48% and approve. And then it just gets worse. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for Joe Biden. So this is the thing. Donald Trump started off bad and he ended bad in terms of the disapproval rating. Joe Biden started off really popular and is really, really unpopular right now because he's crappy at this job. He is just garbage at this job. As Barack Obama once famously stated, don't underestimate Joe's ability to F things up. Don't underestimate it. Again. Look back at the, at the Trump chart for just one moment, because the swing is what matters here. And okay, the swing here is from about 45%. We spent like 10 minutes just like looking at a fucking polling chart. Like, <laughs> this is a little bit. 
approved and 45% disapproved. Why is Biden's approval doing so bad? Um, in, in the economy. It's the economy. People people are feeling the inflation, and I think people are moving accordingly, I think. Or, or their, their feelings are changing accordingly. That's it. 2% disapproved. Okay, so that is about a, a seven-point swing, right? 45 to 52 over the course of year one. Seven-point swing in the negative direction for President Trump over the course of year one. Now look again at the Joe Biden chart. Okay, this Joe Biden chart shows a swing from 56% approved to 42%, a 14-point negative swing. Okay, so Trump got seven points less popular over the course of his first year. Joe Biden got 14% less popular over the course of his first year. Technically, you'd say 14 points. You should, hey, you guys should be really clear. I'm sorry, this, I have a pet peeve when people talk about stuff like this. Points are percentage points and percentages are percentages. Um, let's say that somebody uh, increases from, uh, let's say that I have uh, 10 things and then next year I've got like 20 things. Um, or 10% versus 20%. You wouldn't say like, oh, that was a 10% increase. A 10% increase from 10 is 11, okay? It's a 100% increase or a 10 point increase. When somebody says, oh, he's got a five point lead, that's what they mean. 50 to 55%, that's not a five percentage point. That's not five percentage lead. That's a, right, it's a five point lead. Sorry, just, this is like a random thing. When people don't use points or they just say percentage, I don't know all the time what they're talking about. Like when somebody tells me like, oh my God, there was like a, um, there was like a 40% difference between these things. Is that a lot or is that not as much? Like, do you mean a 40 point difference? Do you mean like, a, yeah, sorry. That's how bad this guy is at this. He's just awful. And we're gonna go through where things stand. Year one of the Biden, and all of this is self-inflicted guys. This is all because Joe Biden is an incompetent buffoon. It's because, as Nate Silver suggests, it's not that Joe Biden was ever a moderate. It's just that Joe Biden was always dead center of the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party has gone completely nuts. The Democratic Party's entire theory of politics is that everything was crazy because of just Trump. If it weren't for Trump, we'd be back to normal. Right? Trump was insane. And it was all about the, the affect. It was all about the tweeting and all about the attitude and all about the crazy jokes and all blamed? about the- Imagine if the parties worked together instead of a never ending blame game. Kindergarten at the highest level. Nice. I never know what to believe anymore, man. The way you explain everyone it, everyone is fucked up. The way you explain it made it sound like they're still the same. Um, like imagine if I say that if you have like a twenty percent increase of cancer or twenty percent increase risk of cancer by you know like engaging in some behavior, right? If that, um, if your initial, but like like that, I don't know what you mean. Let's say you have a one percent and there's a twenty percent increase. Does that mean I now have a twenty one percent chance of getting cancer, or I have a one point two percent chance of getting cancer? That's the difference between a 20% increase versus a 20 point percentage point increase. You need to use MS Paint to explain it. No, I'm too lazy. I explained it well enough. You don't understand it. From whatever and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and, and this led them to believe that so long as the president of the United States didn't say things like that, they could- Oh, fuck. I watched, I have like a TV now so I can like watch things like on TV. I hate doing this to myself, okay? Because I hate watching shows where they're like, oh, it's only good for the first few seasons. But I watched the first episode, House of Cards. Seems like a pretty cool show. Am I gonna hate myself if I keep going on in this TV show? Is it bad? Am I allowed to say that I really like Kevin Spacey as an actor, not as a little boy toucher? Could do anything they wanted and people would just be like, well, I guess things are still sane. No. No. Wrong. It turns out there are two forms of political crazy. What? One form of political crazy mm -hmm. is going out there and ripping on Mexican judges for no reason. And that's kind of like mildly political crazy because- <laughs> Mildly. Most people are just like, that's a, you know, that's kind of nutty behavior, but it has no impact on my life. Then there's true political craziness. The bad thing about what Trump did wasn't even necessarily that he attacked the judges for being Mexican when they weren't Mexican, they were American. The really scary thing that Benny Boy here should think is scary, um, is when you have a president that's undermining your legal system. That should always be like a, a, a scary thing, I think. Um, when you've got a president that's willing to say, you know, like, I'm gonna attack part of our legal system because fuck it, why not? Because they're not giving me good rulings. That should always be a little bit frightening to you. Which is, boys should be girls and girls should be boys. Everybody who disagrees with me wants Jim Crow. What if we pour money onto a gasoline fire of inflation. And what if we just surrender to China and Russia? 
In term, what if we just give Afghanistan? To Why them? does nobody care about all the deficit spending that Trump did? Wait, hold on. I'm I'm wrong. Trump was one of the biggest deficit spenders of all of fucking for no reason even for no reason. Trump came in when the economy was doing fine, and he did, and he still engaged in huge. I think he had one of the largest budget um, budget deficits of all time, and the and the economy wasn't even hurting. Like. How can you fault somebody for, uh, here's like a, I'm so curious. Do Republicans think that deficit spending during economic downturns is bad fiscal policy or is bad government policy? I'm really curious about that. Yeah, like just give it to me for no reason. Here, have, have Afghanistan. That's a form of crazy that has real impact on people's lives as opposed to, you know, the bad tweets. And Democrats failed to recognize that. They thought so long as they slapped a kindly old face on an insane agenda, everything would be fine. Rongo. And it turns out all that happens is that people begin to realize that the kindly old face ain't so kindly when the agenda is really nefarious. We'll get to more of this in just one second. First, let's talk about a simple fact. You need life insurance. Let's say tomorrow there were to be an alien invasion and you knew it was coming. Okay, because damn, I haven't watched Benny Ben on his show, but he is like a super partisan hack. Jesus, but okay. Long time ago in the past, you were just out on your farm and you've been abducted by aliens. So you, you'd been warning everybody you knew for 20 years. Right? You had forethought. You had foresight. You knew this was going to happen. Foresight? And so you were called once more into battle because you'd once been in the Air Force. And um, you'd been discharged. And you, you got into your rickety biplane. And as you were flying directly up into the heart of one of the giant invader spaceships, it occurred to you, man, I knew about this 20 years in advance, but I didn't buy life insurance. That was a real mistake. Should have gone over to policy genius. Was he and always this partisan? I, Trump broke people's brains. Um, Trump definitely, there was definitely a bit of Trump derangement syndrome on the left. Like I can agree with that, but Trump broke the right. He absolutely broke the right. For as much as you want to say Trump derangement syndrome existed on the left, I, like I'll agree with you, but like the true TDS was on the right. These guys, like I have never seen, I was probably, I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in my mom than in the way that she would talk about Trump. Um, it's just unbelievable. Just, just absolutely unbelievable. Um, geez. Joe Biden is, is having a, a terrible, terrible first year. Mark Thiessen has a very good column over at the Washington Post all about this. He says, this is the lived reality millions of Americans are facing a year after a year of Biden's presidency. Inflation has reached a 40 year high and we have a massive labor shortage with more than 10 million unfilled jobs. Biden signed a- Labor, wait, hold on. Okay, the lived reality of most Americans, labor shortage, okay? I don't know if an American worker feels a labor shortage in a negative way. Inflation, the growth in inflation, reaching a 40 year high, which is what is actually happening. I don't know if inflation is, on, or it's the growth of inflation. You measure it quarter to quarter, but it's at a 40 year high in terms of the growth of inflation. Um, but worker labor shortages, I'm pretty sure are beneficial to workers because I'm pretty sure we've also had over the past 40 years, the largest growth in working and middle-class wages huge growth in working and middle-class wages. Our unemployment is sub 4% right now, and there is massive wage growth right now in society. I don't know if a labor shortage is a bad thing for the average worker. I think it's a bad thing for people that run businesses. Partisan $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill in March. And when Omicron arrived, there weren't enough coronavirus tests or therapeutics. Schools are closing again. Emergency room visits for suspected suicide attempts by adolescent girls have jumped 51% from 2019 to 2021, at least 20 Wait, is that? I thought suicides were down. What is the um? What, what where is the source of that? Fifty one percent. I'd be curious to see the number of that. I'm just curious what that's about. Ah, right, fuck. I'll, I need to look that up later. Also, anytime you hear somebody um. <laughs> Oh shit, what did I say this? I had a golden rule for um, stats that you've never heard before. Um, hold on. Now, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Equatorial? Anytime somebody is giving you a hyper-specific demographic, I would be very, I would almost always say, without being familiar with the stats, that somebody is cherry picking. It's interesting that, um, it's interesting that the the stat there was teenage girl suicide attempts. <laughs> what? 
why would you why would you pick out that specific? That seems really strange, but okay. Um, but whatever. Really, I can't just do that. 12 major cities broke annual homicide records in 2021. We are experiencing the worst border crisis in American history and a surge. Are we actually? I feel like, why does it feel like every time there's like a border crisis? It always feels like, it's always like, a, like when you're dealing with destiny and you don't want to debate him, you like break glass. It's like you're a horrible father, you're a pedophile, whatever. I feel like for Republicans, it's like every like six months, they're like, is there a border crisis? Like, is there anybody at the border right now? Can we, is there a crisis here? Um, I don't know, whatever of deadly fentanyl crossing the southern border has helped fuel an increase of 30 percent in overdose deaths in the past year the disastrous retreat from afghanistan projected weakness on the world stage and emboldened russia to amass troops along its border with ukraine <laughs> <laughs> wait this is a washington post op-ed ukraine is about to be invaded because of because the united states pulled out of afghanistan us on the knife's edge of a land war in europe and while Biden promised in his inaugural address to put his whole soul into uniting the country, he just gave a speech comparing millions of Americans to segregationists and traitors. Yeah, that's that's a pretty bad record. That's a pretty bad record. Now, Biden is trying to happy talk his way through this thing. He, he's doing the Obama routine, which is the people just don't understand him. This is Obama's routine. Every time he did something unpopular, he'd be like, well, I just didn't explain it well enough. The American people, if they understood what I was doing, they would love it. And the American people are like, no, we, we understand just what you were doing, and we do not love it, as it, as it turns out. And then you get the same routine from Biden. Well, if I just, uh, come on, you know, you know, man, if you My dad links me, me these explain. studies all the time. He's super pro ivermectin and insists that the study affirms its efficacy. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, not even going to bother looking at it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'll wait to, for something big or whatever to get published, and we'll see. But um, thus far, the data for ivermectin seemed like to be a huge meh. Um, but if something gets like published in a peer-reviewed journal and it changes my mind in the future or whatever, I'll, I'll look into it. But uh, anytime somebody links you like single studies or whatever, especially preprints, now that this one is a preprint, maybe it is published. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm always like very like, a, I don't know. These policies, then travel Come on up here, Kamala. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, this is, that, that's going to work. That, by, by the way, even Elizabeth Warren, who is full-fledged terrible at this. The, the chief Biden critic from the left in the Senate, even Elizabeth Warren, how bad is she? She, she um, even she can't answer if Joe Biden is up to the job. She's asked, like, is Joe Biden up to the job, up for the job? And she had reservations. Let me ask you about 2024. Do you believe that President Biden is up for the job? President Biden's running for re-election. I expect to support him. The, his approval ratings are some of the lowest that they've been for a very long time. I, I understand that, but remember, we've just finished the first quarter. We're just starting into the second quarter here. So we've got a lot of time, a lot of work in front of us. I love that. Like, so you think he's up to the job? He's like, well, he is running for re-election. Like, so is he, is he good? Why would you expect a potential future candidate to, like, wholeheartedly endorse or support a potential competitor in the future. Why would you expect that to be the case? Like, I don't know if she's planning on running for election again, but like, like, <laughs> what? But it does. Like, well, there's time, and time exists. I like how they flash his approval rating on the screen there. According to that CBS News poll, by the way, he's gone from 61% approval to 44%. Ow, we don't. <laughs> Yeah, those are not good numbers, gang. Those are really bad numbers. So, the good news is the White House has found a reason to pivot. They want to pivot. Pivot, pivot, pivot. They're like Ross in the stairwell with the couch. Pivot. We have to pivot. According to NBC News, White House plots public reset as Biden's agenda fails. I, I love this. I love it so much. Every time the newspaper starts talking about how a politician needs to reset. Something. Uh, fuck. Sorry. Hold on. I'm skimming for a second. Okay. So, it's always cool when you're familiar with something. And then you get like a TV show that says stuff and it you can tell that they put a lot of research into like how things are done. Um, Mr. Robot was a good example of this. When he, when Mr. I've only ever seen a few scenes, but anytime he talks about like hacking shit, it, it sounds exactly like how you would gain access to certain systems. It's not like some weird special program or whatever. Usually he's talking about like older exploits or known, you know, issues with certain things, right? Which is like really cool. Um, one thing I've noticed so far and this is only on episode 
one of House of Cards, okay? This is an old show, so you guys have all seen this. You should know the answer to this question, okay? Um, usually anytime politics is brought up in a show, it's like, it's comically stupid how all the politician people are t t like treated and how easy it is to, they're corruptible and blah, 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 blah. It's like super cringe. It seems like so far with the way that Kevin Spacey's character is like navigating, uh, you know, like the different connections and shit and how you can kind of use media or whatever. It seems like it's pretty decently written so far though. Do you think that, um, does the show maintain that or does it get like comically stupid at some point? It gets pretty dumb, oh shit. Why are you wasting time with House of Cards and you haven't watched Mr. Robot? Well, because I've heard that Mr. Robot breaks down even harder. That like Mr. Robot literally makes it for one season and then on season two it turns into a dog shit show. Is that not true? It's good until season three. I was watching Fox News and they had this guy, I couldn't believe it. They had this guy and he said Americans work too much and this guy, he's a dog walker. Can you believe that, Obama? A politician needs to rejigger their comms. What Whoa. they really mean is this politician is super bad at it. And this is what you hear from Kamala Harris's team every 20 minutes. And like almost on the dot, they just set a timer on their watch. Like, oh, it's been 20 minutes, time to reset Kamala's comms strategy. And Kamala's over in the corner saying, it is, it is time to do what we have always done. And time is with a clock. And her team's like, okay, it's been 20 minutes, T time to reset that comms. And she's over in the corner. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it isn't the comms. You're bad at this. It's not your it's not your communication strategy. It's that your policies suck. They're bad. They're bad. Thank you, man. I mean, Joe Biden's entire comm strategy during his campaign was what if I sit in a basement and eat oatmeal and watch Matlock and he won? Okay, so like it's not about the comms. It's about you sucking at this. Real I'm not sure you could be worse at this if you tried to be bad at it. It's incredible. We'll get to that that. We'll get to that story in a second about the the, tri the, the attempted rejiggering of the Biden's comm strategy first. BC News, it's time for a reset. It's a reset, guys. Biden's reset plan, senior administration officials said, is to make his conversations with members of Congress less of a public priority and to emphasize spending more time communicating directly with Americans. Yeah, that's going to go well because he's done a great job of that so far. You know, every week he gets on your TV and falls asleep. He gets on your TV, he's like, uh, COVID is and the unvaxxed are let's let's hit them with my with my walker. I'm gonna hit them with my walker. And Americans like that's ah, not he didn't that that's not good. He said, like, well, if you don't you don't like that, here I am on your TV again, and I think that you wanna re-enslave black people. And it's a Americans like that no, not doing it. Not that that that's not helping, Joe. And what if I what if I say that that you guys are are basically Jesus. Hitler? No, this isn't going to work. Joe Biden is a bad communicator. He's very, very bad at this. This is the, the part that's so funny. Is everybody, he's a master communicator. The dude ran for president 83 times. He lost all of the times. The only reason anyone even knows Joe Biden's name right now, other than as the, the foolish plagiaristic senator who had to drop out of a presidential race once and got shellacked every other time he ran, and was a senator from a state. He that what? <laughs> Imagine trying to rag on somebody's political history when you're the president of the United States. Like, this guy, like, who's the strongest man in the world or most powerful man, like, arguably in the world? Okay, Biden. But, the, like, he's ran for president before he lost. Like, bro, like, I feel like we're reaching so hard. There has to be more substance that we can, like, insult somebody on than, like, huh, he fucked up the first time he ran for president. Like, come on. There's got to be, there's got to be something better. It's kind of like, no offense to my fellow lefties, but it's kind of like cringy when people attack like um, Trump for lying about his net worth. They're like, I don't even think he's worth $10 billion. He's probably not. He's worth like $3 billion. Yeah, sure. But like, bro, he's a fucking billionaire. Okay. That's a lot of money. All right. That's not like, I would be okay being worth, you know, just like $3 billion, you know. It is mainly run by credit card companies. The only reason anyone has ever heard of Joe Biden is because Barack Obama needed a buffoonish old white man to be his vice president. Now, sometimes I say that, that Kamala Harris was an affirmative action pick because she was, because Joe Biden said, I need a black woman. Joe Biden was also an affirmative action pick. Barack Obama was like, what if I just take a staid old white man so that I look moderate? That was pretty much his agenda. And Joe Biden continued to fail upward. The only reason that Joe Biden is president right now is because Barack Obama picked him for his vice president. And then his main competition in a democratic primary was a senile old communist and then his main competition in a presidential race 
was a guy who just blurged all over Twitter every two, two minutes. Like that, that is the only reason that this idiot is president of the United States. And they're like, well, what if he talked more to the American? You go for it, man. Put him on the TVs every day. More of him. He does a spectacular job. First rule of holes, stop digging. But Joe Biden is out there with a spade digging. Just After all this the way video, to China. you might want to reconsider having There's a Betty recognition Boy on the list change of people the dynamic. Senior administration this dude is fucking NBC stupid News, WTF. Adding that Biden has told aides and lawmakers to he intends to, to make the this. shift. Yeah, there's nothing that Joe Biden does better than, than sticking and moving. That's, that's what he's great at. Part of the goal is to shed the growing image that Biden is approaching the presidency like a member of the Senate, where he spent more than three decades. He's mindful he doesn't want to send the message. His role is to be legislator in chief, another senior administration official said. Biden's advisors are looking at a variety of ways for him to engage more with Americans, officials said. There's no agreement yet about what the alternatives might entail. He can only eat ice cream so many times. He can only run naked after his dog from the shower like so many times. While there is unity among advisors about having Biden talk to more people directly, another official said, there's no agreement about whether the effort will work. No, there is. It's not going to work. I'm just going to put it right. It's not going to work. Wait, no, what, hold official, on. official said. Biden's advisors are looking at a variety of ways for him to engage more with Americans, official said. There's no agreement yet about what the alternatives might entail. He can only eat ice cream so many times. He can only run naked after his dog from the shower like so many times. While there is unity among advisors about having Biden talk to more people directly, another official said, directly there's no agreement about whether the effort will work. No, there is. It's not going to work. I'm just going to put it right. It's not going to work. Spoiler alert, Joe Biden talking to humans, not a thing that works. Changing a White House strategy to engage more directly with Americans is an evergreen reset plan that has been activated by previous presidents who have found themselves in politically precarious moments. For Biden- this, It sucks too, because like when you're a Democrat, you've got to work so hard to like try to be relatable to your audience. But somehow dipshit Republicans brainwashed themselves into thinking that Trump, the fucking billionaire playboy, literally pays a porn star a fuck ton of money to not reveal that he fucked him uh, while he's like married or whatever. Like, this is the guy that you relate to. Like, the billionaire guy? Really? That's the... But I don't know. That's, yeah. that's wild to me. No one cares about the porn star thing. It's a distraction. I would bet my entire family's life that if the black president, Barack Obama, a porn star paid her off while f***ing married, I would hear about that every single f***ing day until I died. You're I would, I, you would never, ever, ever not hear about that. And they would probably call him the porn star fucker in chief, is what they would call Obama if he did that. Bro, Obama had to have the perfect family life or that guy would have been destroyed. Black president, if he would have had, what was Trump through three marriages, imported wife from Eastern Europe, um, cheated on her with porn stars. Like, dude, if Barack Obama had half the personal life that Trump did, you would have never, ever, ever heard. Like, it would, it would be like, it would be over. Yeah. Like, Jesus. <laughs> In that moment has arrived earlier than his team expected after early momentum from his sweeping safety net bill. Presidential historian Michael Beschloss said, oftentimes in modern history, when a president has frustrations and drops in the polls, the president will say, it's now time for me to talk over the heads of the elites and talk directly to the people to convince them that what I'm trying to do is right. Yeah, the problem is that Biden can't talk anymore. He just grunts and makes noises. Biden has struggled to gain his footing on the coronavirus pandemic, which he promised to get under control and ultimately defeat. He's also been hampered by the collapse of Build Back Better. While some of Biden's aides have expressed concern, they're very concerned that he is seemingly bogged down at the White House, giving too many one-dimensional speeches from Washington instead of showcasing what they see as his greatest political strength, empathy, and an ability to connect with ordinary Americans. That is gone. He blew it up. It's over for him. And this is why he's not going to recover. The reason he's not going to recover is because once you blow the empathy line, it ain't coming back. Once it has been revealed that you care less about American soldiers dying in Afghanistan than you reaching a pullout by an arbitrary date so that you can celebrate yourself as some sort of- It's not arbitrary, bro. Why are you so dishonest? Why is he so f dishonest? It was the timeline that Trump already the negotiated. Up, right? Why is he pretending like it's, why it's arbitrary? Dude. Grand peacemaker, which is what happened in Afghanistan. That ain't coming back. Joe Biden, Captain Empathy was always bullcrap. But it certainly is not coming back now. And when he started defending his action in Afghanistan and, and dead service members in Afghanistan by citing the fact that his son died of brain cancer, like, no, none of that works and it ain't coming back and it is over for him. He's still got to be president for three years, but that guy is a lame duck right now.
And by the way, that lame duckery has consequences, as it turns out. He is failing on every single front. The Taliban Remember. didn't honor the Trump agreement, so Biden had no reason to keep dude. Wait, what part of the agreement did the Taliban not honor? What are you talking about? Joe Biden and Barack Obama in 2012 suggested when Mitt Romney said that the greatest geopolitical threat the United States faced was Russia. Joe Biden said that the 1980s called and they wanted their foreign policy back. Well, now Russia is about to invade Ukraine. Russia has 100,000 troops on the borders of Ukraine. They're openly threatening Ukraine. And Joe Biden's own White House is like, yeah, they could invade at any moment. We, we really have no plans. Do you think the threat of invasion is getting higher or lower? Well, I think, as I noted a few minutes ago, we believe we're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack on Ukraine. Uh, I would say that's more stark than we have been. More stark? Well, I mean, now that you've said it, problem solved, right, guys? Tony Blinken is being sent to meet his Russian counterpart as the White House is- Bro, this dude is so hawkish. Holy fuck, what does he want? Should we be, de like, deploying, or deploying our military to, like, Ukraine right now and just- Or should we start bombing Russia immediately? Or, like, what, I, what does Benny Boy think we should be doing here? Warning that Moscow could attack Ukraine at any point. And given Antony Blinken's stellar record of being terrible at literally everything he touches, I'm sure this will end really, really well. I'm sure he's going to do a great job. Yeah, I'm, you know, no, not so much. Not so much. Again, every wound that this administration is suffering from is a wound they inflicted themselves. Hey, important question. Are you going to join Emirates Stream or League of Legends tournament? Uh, I don't know what that is, but if it's a miskip thing, I think they said that they, they're looking for like people that are new or don't have a lot of experience. I don't think they want people um, that like play the game a ton to join. I, that was my impression when I saw his post about it. They made all this happen. This is not, again, some sort of extraneous circumstance that crashed down upon their heads like the Civil War upon Lincoln or like the Great Depression on Herbert Hoover. Every single thing that has happened right now that is damaging this administration is the fault of this administration. It's unprecedented. It really is incredible. We'll get to more of it in just incredible. one second. First, are you spending too much money on gas? Of course you are. Why? Well, because yeah, Joe Biden is inflation of the United States and everything he touches turns to crap. Well, here is the thing. There is an incredible app that everyone who buys gas needs to know about. Get Upside. Okay, so Tony Blinken, the greatest of all secretaries of state, has now been deployed over to talk with the Russians. According to the Washington Post, Secretary of State Blinken will meet Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Geneva on Friday in an effort to resolve the standoff over Ukraine, with U.S. officials warning a Russian invasion could be imminent. The meeting will follow a week of intense diplomacy as the top U.S. diplomat heads to Ukraine and Germany for discussions on the crisis, the State Department said. Adding urgency to Blinken's talks is Russia's fresh deployment of troops to Belarus to conduct major military exercises that will further strengthen the number of Russian forces along Ukraine's border. The troop movements coupled with statements from Moscow that it was unsatisfied with meetings held with the United States, European, and NATO officials last week have had some officials in Washington fearing the worst. Despite the troubling developments, a senior State Department official said the meeting between Blinken and Lavrov in the Swiss city indicated that diplomacy is not dead. The official said, we are prepared to continue to engage with Russia on security issues in a meaningful reciprocal dialogue. We'll see this Friday if Russia prepares to do the same. The official declined to say if the U.S. or Russia first proposed the meeting. The reason he declined is because the answer is the United States. And the, the answer is that the United States is going hat in hand to the Russians to say, what can we do to prevent you from simply walking into Ukraine? See, here's the thing. Maybe we'll have some sort of response to Russia invading Ukraine. But the reason Russia is invading Ukraine is because when you surrender on the world stage to, you know, a bunch of barbarians from the 8th century, all of your political opponents look at you and go, hey, maybe we should do something too. Hilariously enough, we still have members of the Biden administration defending the administration's activities in Afghanistan. UN Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, she still thinks that we fix things in Afghanistan, which is kind of incredible considering that, you know, the entire country is now under the purview of a, of a massive terror group. We ended a 20-year war. The president committed to doing that, uh, and he followed through on that commitment. It was a challenging withdrawal, uh, but I can tell you that I have met with our <laughs> Afghan allies who are here. Hold on, wait, I'm sorry. I just read it back and forth. Is that Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson back and forth? Is that real or is that a meme? That people fall off their roof installing solar panels? That can't, that's not real, is it? Wait, let me listen to this real quick weird idea of nuclear because of the several you know whether it's uh, three mile island chernobyl there's been a few disasters yeah more you know, people Fukushima. die every year from solar energy than die from nuclear who dies from solar <laughs> well, of course, guess, guess how you die from solar 
uh, sunburn? No, you fall off the roofs when you're installing it. Oh, yeah, that's oh, gravity, right? Yeah, gravity, gravity, yeah. and you know that's a good example of unintended consequences, because. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, how many Zans is this guy taking before he goes on these shows? I don't. Does it make you giggly, or doesn't it just make you tired and relaxed? Why do people? Where am I? Who Who is abusing Xanax in chat? Why do you guys do this fucking drug? Every time I read about it, it sounds like the most boring shit in the world. Why would you kill yourself on such a boring fucking drug? Like at least like heroin and shit gives you like an otherworldly euphoric experience. Benzos just seem so boring. Like oh yeah, I OD'd on this shit because it makes me very relaxed. Like dog. <laughs> Fucking go jerk off. Systems are complex, and when you change them, you think only good things will happen. A weird idea of nuclear because of the several, you know, whether it's uh, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl. Jackson Hinkle is debating Sam Cedar. It's a goddamn clown fiesta. Oh shit, wait, live right now? Oh no, wait, fuck. There's no, they you got just ask me a question. You want me to finish answering or not? I'm Sam, they never complain when you got the gifts. Yes, we were such assholes sneaking you money on your phone. Oh account. no, this is when mom and dad roasted him on Twitter. Why is Sam going so hard? Oh no. Jackson is crying on a stream that Sam muted him. You guys muted me and tried to get me off the stream. Matt just said it. No, no you're I, back. I just said I muted you because you were talking over We the do clip. that and fairly why, why? Why didn't you unmute me when it was over? And then you claimed that I muted myself and I was muted. Hey Jackson, you're talking to me. Let me just clarify. I asked you to unmute yourself. You'll notice in the chat I said, are you able to unmute yourself? And you left.